Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I'm right here with you each and every week at this time on this station to bring you, the Pennsylvania landowner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development. And boy, I hope every listener out there knows that I, Doug Clark, and the Clark Law Firm does not, has not, and will never, will not, will never represent a gas or pipeline company. I represent Pennsylvania landowners, property owners, oil and gas right owners, because we need it. We need it on our side. These guys have enough lawyers working for them. We need lawyers working for you, not for the companies, but for you. And at the Clark Law Firm, I represent landowners for, of course, gas lease negotiations, gas lease reviews, consultations, royalty, royalty deduction issues, breaches of gas leases, pipeline agreements, oil and gas contracts, unitization issues, pooling and unitization, amendments and ratifications. Again, amendment, modification, and ratification. They are killers for people who are just signing them. We got to stop just signing these documents and get assistance. Also, pipeline agreements. I have negotiated on, consulted with, reviewed pipeline agreements in Pennsylvania with over involving over 70 different pipeline companies to give you an idea of what's out there. We need to make sure that we are defending our property, protecting our property. You know, we're entering into agreements, but we're looking to enter into fair agreements, not one-sided agreements favoring the other side. And a word of caution, if you are solely listening to the company employee or the company land man who works for the company, who doesn't work for you, you may be moving towards and signing a bad agreement because you're only listening to the other side. We need to get this information out to everybody. So everybody is signing better agreements, more fair agreements, who are not not going to be surprised in the future when deductions are taken from their royalty payments, when operations are occurring on their surface of their property out their front window and they didn't think that was possible. When a company comes back years later, and installs separate lines, pipelines in the ground, digs everything up again. When a company comes out and places something above ground in the right of way, an easement area, so a structure above ground. Oh, and then they fence it off. So now you have this big above ground structure or facility on your property and then there's a fence around it and you had no idea that that may occur. That has to stop. And I'll tell you, it's actually fairly easy to stop if you're getting good advice and you're working with somebody who's not working for the company, but is working for you, working solely to help you enter into the best possible agreement. And as you'll hear me say constantly, I would love to hear from you. I would love to help you. It's what I do and I love to do it. But if you don't call me, call somebody who is working for you, whose goal is to help you, to represent you, to get you the best possible information, to make the best possible decision for you, your property, and future generations. Stop simply signing these agreements. Stop simply signing the agreements that you're presented. Do a review, consultation, get information. You can always call us at 570 307 0702, regardless of where you're located, as long as the property and rights are in Pennsylvania, 570-307-0702. Find out how we do things and see if I'm right for you. And remember, if you call the Clark Law Firm, if we're right for you and you retain us, you will be retaining me. I will be representing you, not an associate or anyone else. We have clients, again, all over Pennsylvania, clients located across the country with Pennsylvania property rights. Don't be afraid of distance. Don't be afraid, oh, my property isn't big enough. No. Call, get information, and if we're right for you and I can help you, that is wonderful. That's what I want to do. That's what I do. But if we can't and it's not right, then, hey, 
that's okay. Just call and find out. And I'm not trying to just beg for calls. I'm begging that we got to get the best information out to you. So keep, if you don't call, keep listening to the show. Go to the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com. Go to pipelineattorney.com. Get informed, get educated. That is the number one reasons. Those are the number one reasons the people sign bad agreements is a lack of information and education on that topic. Not that people are not smart, not at all. It's that this is a unique area, an area that you've never really dealt with or you dealt with at the time when the development was just simple conventional wells that are just drilled down and the goal was free gas. This is a different world now. These are major commercial industrial contracts. Get some help before you sign and before you agree to everything. Because otherwise, it's just going to continue. The people are going to continue to sign bad agreement after bad agreement, leaving tens of thousands, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table, opening up their property to activity that they could have prevented, but they weren't educated and weren't informed and didn't understand their negotiation leverage and their rights. So I'm telling you, we have to stop that. We have to get you that information to make sure that you're making the best decision for you and your situation to protect your property and to make sure that you're maximizing income, money, compensation, damages, payments for today and then decades and decades into the future. That's what we need to do. So give us a call. 570-307-0702. Sorry for the commercial, but if you don't call me, I'm telling you, call someone. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station, and you can give us a call, 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. See if we can help you. So, all right, let's get to the topic of the day. And today's topic, ladies and gentlemen, will be deception, deception. Okay, what do I mean by that? I'm telling you, I think this show is going to be an outstanding example as to why we need to make sure from the landowner, property owner, royalty owner side that we are protecting ourselves and not just simply listening to the company, their employees, their representatives, and their landmen who work for them and not for you. Here's what I'm talking about. In an oil and gas lease, and that's the basis, you hear me say, this is the blueprint. The oil and gas lease is the blueprint for all future operations. It's going to dictate what pipeline rights there are, what surface rights there are, how you're going to be paid royalties should gas development or oil development occur. So the lease is the foundation. Now, if you already signed a lease and there's no time to go back, you may have another opportunity where you're presented with a pipeline agreement, a surface agreement, a roadway agreement. Put your pen down. Don't repeat the same mistakes. But that's just a little side point. Here's what I want to talk about. In an oil and gas lease, there are two fundamental, most likely the most important parts of your gas lease. When it boil it all down, there are two major components that truly matter to the landowner and the royalty owner. Two, and they are money, how am I going to be paid, and how am I going to be paid today for a lease bonus, and then also, how am I going to be paid royalties in the future? So money, everybody knows that. Of course, so does the company, and that's why they're always trying to hold up shiny objects of money saying, sign and you will be rich in the future. Money, money, money. You will be rich. You will be rich. Here's my pen. But again, I digress slightly. So two major components in any gas lease that really, really matter to the landowner. Of course, there are many others, but the, we're going to talk about these two major components today. And deception, deception, company deception on these two major components. Component number one, money. How am I going to be paid today, lease bonus? 
how am I going to be paid in the future, the percentage of royalty, and how will my royalties be calculated? Again, how are my royalties going to be calculated? And most people aren't looking at that. They're only looking at the bonus and the percentage and not how are my royalties going to be calculated. And that is an enormous mistake. You must not only just look at how my royalties are going to be calculated, you must understand that. You must understand. And I am going to give you black and white, legitimate black and white examples of company deception. I'll say this, my opinion, my super, super strong opinion of unbelievable company deception where a landowner is deceived into thinking they're getting something when in fact they're getting something else. And as you may suspect, what you're getting is not what you thought and it's not better than what you thought. It is a whole lot worse, potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars worse. And actually, honestly, into the millions at times, depending upon the size and location of the property. But let me reset. The point is deception on how I'm going to be paid. Two enormous parts of the gas lease. Payment. How am I going to be paid? How am I going to be paid today? And how are my royalties going to be calculated in the future? Number one, and I'm going to give you great and to me incredible, meaning bad incredible, not believable. Examples of deception, blatant deception. When you know what these terms mean and you understand the language, which doesn't come easy, deception as to how you're going to get paid for the next many decades. That is an enormous example of deception with unbelievably high value. And I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to give you black and white examples. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station. Let's talk about item number two. Two big points, enormous points for landowners in the underlying gas lease, which is the blueprint for future operations and future payments. Number one, we talked about money, payment, enormous part, royalty calculation method going forward. Number two, operations, surface operations on your property. What is the company allowed to do? Can they do anything they want? Where can they operate? What can they put on the property? Again, where can that thing be located? Pipelines, roadways, water impoundments, so on storage area, staging area, on and on and on and on. So, we need from the landowner side always before we're signing any lease to fully and thoroughly understand what rights you're given the company to operate on the property, where they can operate, and if they want to operate on the surface of your property, what future rights or input do you have? And once again, I am going to give you an unbelievable, it would be unbelievable, but unfortunately, it's hard to find something nowadays that's not unbelievable. I am going to give you a great example of where a landowner is given language, which is unbelievably deceptive and how if the landowner just simply listens to the company land man who works for the company, not you, the landowner, the company representative or the company employee, well, they may think that they are getting a certain thing or they're getting certain limits and restrictions when actuality, in actuality, they're not. Now, I'm going to talk about, again, black and white examples of what I see as amazing deception that's occurring all the time. And these are just examples. And if they're occurring on the two biggest items in the lease for you, how are you going to get paid? How are your royalties going to be calculated? And how can the company operate on my surface? How can those things occur? If they are going to totally deceive you there, if that's going to occur, what do you think is occurring on lesser items, 
items that you may not have your complete focus on. What do you think is occurring there? So these are glaring examples, in my opinion, of severe deception that people are not aware of, that they're falling for, because they're not getting advice, counsel from someone who's working for them, who knows what they're doing, who's there to benefit them, but instead they're relying on the information presented to them by the other side who wants you to sign a contract. And who do you think that contract is going to benefit? Who do you think that contract is drafted by gas and pipeline company lawyers to benefit? I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give you the answer. It's not you. It's not you. So I get back. I'm going to tell you black and white examples of what I see as unreal deception. The people, these are examples that people rely on, enter into these agreements. And then years later, when all of a sudden something is happening that they never thought was possible, then they call me. And I say, my heavens, I wish I would have talked to you before because we could have present, prevented all of this. And that's what we got to stop. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am here each and every week at this time on this station. Make sure you are too. We need to get you this information. You can always call me 570-307-0702. See if we can help you call before you sign. Before you sign, 570-307-0702. I want to help you. Stay tuned. We have a super important message. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember to join me each and every single week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. I have been doing this show since August of 2010. And as I say, we're not stopping. We are not stopping because people are continuing to sign bad agreements. We need to make sure we get this information out there. And I'm going to give you two incredibly clear, obvious examples regarding the two, what I see is arguably, if not the most important parts of any gas lease. Number one, how are you getting, how much are you getting paid and how are you getting paid? And number two, what operations what authority to conduct operations are you giving the company under the terms of your gas lease two enormous parts one how are you going to get paid and we're really going to focus on how are you going to get paid in the future what is the method what is the calculation method of your royalties going to be how are your royalties going to be calculated we can't just look at 12 and a half, 15, 18, 20, 21 percent. No, we need to look at how that royalty is going to be calculated. There are many leases that I would much rather have 12 and a half percent royalty with a favorable royalty calculation method than I would 21 percent and quite frankly, 25 percent in many cases. Don't get blinded by numbers. You need to pay attention to the words also. How are my royalties going to be calculated? And number two, again, what type of operation authority am I giving the company to conduct operations on my property? Meaning put a well pad, put a roadway, put a pipeline, put a water impoundment pond, a storage area, all kinds of other things. So we're looking at what are these two big ticket items. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So I said our, our show theme today is deception. It's my word. It's my opinion. But here's why I say that. So landowner calls me. We do, we're going to do a review and consultation. You hear me talk about these all the time because time and time again, they are proven to be so valuable. And I do them for landowners. We do them on telephone. We can do them in person, but I do them with landowners all across Pennsylvania. I do them in Western Pennsylvania landowners all the time. Tioga, Potter County, Lycoming County, all the time I do these. And they time and time again prove to be a great value to the client, to the landowner, to the royalty owner. And what we do is 
you can always come in. I'd love to see you. We sit down, we go over, I answer all your questions. I explain the document. I explain what rights you have, what leverage you have, what the market is, what you might be able to do. And we go into real deep detail. And we make sure, I make sure that you understand it, that if you're going to sign this document, you understand it today and you understand how it's going to apply in the future. Generally speaking, the reviews and consultations usually take about two hours, including the time that I spend in reviewing the documents and preparing for the call. But we want to make sure that you understand the documents and how they're going to apply. And again, they've proven to be so, so valuable. So you can call. You want to learn about that. Give the office a call. 570-307-0702. Before you sign, give us a call. I do all of these myself. 570-307-0702. 0702. Okay, so back to our word of the day, my word, my word, deception. So landowner, a great example, landowner calls me, says, hey, we want to do a review and consultation. We set it all up. They send the gas lease in. They send all their paperwork. I review it. And as I review it, I say, oh, thank heavens, I'm doing this review and consultation for this landowner because I have a strong suspicion that they are being deceived in what they think they're getting and what they're actually getting. And again, I'm going to continue to say all this show, this is my word deceived. I'm saying that. And here is my first example as to why I'm saying that. Landowner does a review and consultation, sends me in their gas lease, their, their addendum and other related documents. I review it. Now we're getting on the call. And let's go, we'll go a little hypothetical here, but this is something that could very reasonably occur. Let's put it this way. So say to a landowner, hey, I've reviewed everything and I see that you have a provision related to the company's ability, and this is an addendum provision, related to the company's ability to operate on the surface of your property under the terms of this gas lease. And can you tell me what you think you have here so we can talk about it. Landowner says, absolutely. You know, I didn't know that I even needed to do a review and consultation, but I decided, hey, let me just do it just in case. And, you know, it seemed like a smart move to do. So I figured small investment of time and money, and I'm going to do that. And then I'll know going forward in case I missed anything. And so I say, hey, you know, this is great. So again, we continue to say, all right, well, what do you have? Well, I'm pretty excited and I'm pretty proud because what I have is a lease that says that the company cannot operate, conduct operations, or even go on my property. That my lease only allows the company to place my property in a gas production unit so I can get royalties, but the company absolutely cannot drill a well, create a well pad, install a pipeline, install a roadway, impoundment pond, and so on and so on. And in fact, they, they say the company can't even conduct seismic operations. That's how good I have. So I don't think there's really much we need to talk about, but I just figured get this to you, make sure that uh, yeah, I wasn't mess missing anything just in case. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. So again, we'll continue with our little hypo here. So person says, yeah, yeah, so I, I really didn't know that we needed to talk, but you know, hey, I figure wise move, what can it hurt? Small investment of time and money, let me do it. And I say, well, I'm really glad that you did because unfortunately, I have to tell you something. Yes, indeed, you sent me an addendum that says no surface use. That in the addendum that you have to your lease, it is labeled in all bold typed lettering. Three bold words, no surface use, period. Then it goes on and says, notwithstanding any provision contained in this lease to the contrary. And that's okay. That's some fancy legalese saying, despite everything else, here's what really matters. So then it goes on and says that the company is prohibited from using the surface of the leased 
premises. Lease the premises meaning the property. So it says that the company is precluded from using the property for any purposes without the prior written consent of you, the landowner, the property owner. So again, it says that the company is prohibited from using the surface of your property for any purpose. Wow. Well, pretty hard to misconstrue that, right? It says right here, no surface use. Then it goes on, and again, paraphrasing, make it clear. Company is prohibited from using the surface of the property without the prior written consent of the landowner. If it stopped there, that would have been great. But notice I said if it stopped there. It didn't. Unfortunately, it didn't. So when I talk about deception, in my opinion, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an addendum provision provided by the company to the property owner, to the royalty owner, to the gas right owner that says in bold letters, these three words, no surface use doesn't get clearer than that. That is the heading, no surface use. But then it goes on and tells you something opposite. It says that the company is prohibited from using the surface of your property without your written consent, meaning you have to sign off. You have to write and say, yes, I give you that approval. However, 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 there's another clause to this paragraph, to this sentence, which says, which such written consent, so which such written consent may not be unreasonably withheld. Again, no surface use, bold letters, regular text. Company cannot use the surface of the property without your prior written signature but you cannot unreasonably withhold your signature. Ladies and gentlemen, in my humble opinion, that is unbelievably deceptive. That tells you when you look at it, and this person thinks this, they have a no surface lease that they signed this lease and no one can ever touch their property unless they agree in writing. However, it then says that if the company comes, it doesn't say this, but this is what it means. If the company comes to you and says, we want to operate on your property, we want to put a 25 acre well pad and roadway, 20 acre, 15, whatever we want to do it. And you say, well, ha, you can't do that because I was smart. I negotiated a no surface lease addendum provision. And let me go get my lease and explain to you why you can't do it. And you say, look, here it is that my lease says you cannot operate on the surface of my property unless I approve it in writing. And the new land man, the new company employee, not the one who signed a lease with you, but somebody else says, uh, yes, there, Mr. Smith. But you may see there's another uh, clause to that last sentence, which says that you cannot unreasonably deny or unreasonably withhold your consent for these operations. And we feel that you're being unreasonable. And so we're going to go ahead and do it. And if you don't like it, sue us and try to stop us. But one thing is truly clear. You do not have a no surface use, non surface development lease. No, you have the same type of lease that 10,000 other people have that says you can operate anywhere in the world on my property and, and you, but you have to get my signature, but I can't unreasonably withhold my signature. That's a super common term, but thankfully, thankfully in most cases, it's not labeled no surface use agreement because it's not a no surface use agreement. I repeat, that is absolutely positively not a no surface agreement. But yet here it is in bold faced typing, no surface use. And in my example, the individual thought 
they had negotiated a lease that they couldn't touch the surface of the property. And they were given that impression. In my opinion, they were deceived. They were substantially deceived because they think they have a lease that does not allow a company to operate on their property. When in reality, despite the fact that it says no surface use lease, despite that, the company can operate on the property. They just have to come to you and get your permission, but you can't unreasonably withhold your permission. Meaning that if you say no and the company says, well, you're being unreasonable, now you have a huge problem versus if you had a true no surface use agreement, it would have stopped at the, it would not have included the clause, excuse me, which says which consent may not be unreasonably withheld. Here's the difference. A non-surface use lease would say that the company is precluded or prohibited from using the surface of the property for any purpose without the landowner's written consent. Full stop. It does not go on. A no surface lease would not go on to say that without the written consent, which said consent cannot be unreasonably withheld. That is not a no surface lease. And if you think it's a no surface lease, you're wrong. But it's understandable that you could be deceived, tricked, fooled, duped, because it says right there in all bold letters, no surface use. So again, the one of the fundamental, two fundamental principles of your oil and gas lease, operations. What type of operations can occur in your property? And this person, in my example, my hypothetical, but real language, was deceived was deceived, believed they had something, and they were wrong. And thankfully, they called me, we did a review, we do a reconsultation, and we get it changed. And say, yeah, you're going to present us with a no-surface lease addendum. What's well, dang well going to be a no-surface lease addendum? So you delete it, you take care of it, you get it covered, you do a review and consultation in this example, and actually get it fixed. Versus signing what you thought was a no-surface lease because you were deceived, my word, we got to stop it. We got to make sure that no one's getting deceived, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Sorry to go commercial, but I got to say it one more time. Reviews and consultations are outstanding ways to avoid being deceived. Understand what you have in front of you, what you're considering signing, how it applies today, and how it may apply or will apply in the future. That's what we got to do. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. Learn about reviews and consultations, other services. Most importantly, keep joining us each and every week at this time on this station. We got to get this information out. We have to get this information out. When I get back, I'm going to talk about royalties. We talked about operations and deception, which is in black and white. Wait till you hear the royalties. Wait till you hear the royalties. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. Been doing this radio show since 2010. And again, we're not stopping. And remember at the Clark Law Firm, I, Doug Clark, have not, do not, and I will never represent gas or pipeline companies. Give us a call, learn about what we do, see if we can help you, gas lease reviews, consultations, pipeline agreements. I've done so many pipeline agreements all across Pennsylvania. Royalty, royalty deduction issues. Tioga County, Sweppy. If you are held by a single vertical well and have been held that way for several years, preferably four, five, six, I want to hear from you. That's wrong. We need to do something about it. 570 570- 0702. If it's you, your neighbor, somebody you know, you're in Tioga County, Sweppy is holding you by a vertical well that's not producing, that they've capped, and it's sitting there for year after year after year. I'm frustrated. I'm sure it's nothing compared to your frustration. Give me a call. Let's see what we can do about it. 570-307-0702. And that's right. This is a direct plea to people in Tioga County. We have to stop this. That's not right for you guys. It's not occurring everywhere. It's occurring with you, and we got to do something about it. And I promise you, this is something that I think about 
every single day and we got to make it stop. So if you're in that position, I want to hear from you. I want to see if we can help you. 570-307-0702, especially if you've been shut in for five years, four or five years, six years, the longer, the more powerful of a claim you may have. I want to hear from you. Again, sorry to be commercial, but I'm telling him that has me so fired up. It's just not right, and that's what we got to stop. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember that today's show, as all other shows, will be up and available the following day. So today's show will be up on the websites at pagasleaseattorney.com and pipelineattorney.com. They will be up tomorrow morning, Monday morning. So if you can't join us each and every week at this time on this station, you can go to the websites anytime. PAGasLeaseAttorney.com, PipelineAttorney.com. Listen to the week's show and also use the sites as a resource. The radio show and the websites are not specific advice, but they're resources and general information. Educate yourself. Look around. Read. Educate yourself. Even if you're not looking for representation, use them as a resource. They're there to try to help make everybody more informed and more educated and enter into better agreements. All right. We're talking about deception today. My word, deception. First example, well, well back up. We're talking about two different things. Two extremely important parts of a gas lease are the operations on the surface. What can occur in the surface of your property after you sign a gas lease? And that's one part of it. Number two, how are you going to be paid? Not just today, but also in the future, meaning how are your royalties going to be calculated under your oil and gas lease? Are there deductions going to be taken? Where will your royalties, the value of the gas be calculated at? At the wellhead, as soon as the gas comes out of the ground, or at the point where the gas is sold, which may be at the interstate pipeline. It may be in Canada. Who knows where it may be? But we want to know those items. So two major, maybe arguably the most important aspects of the gas lease. What can occur on your property and how are you going to be paid? We talked about deception. And what I'm going to talk to you about or what I've been talking about is deception on these two most fundamental important items to most people. So if you're going to be deceived there, what else might you be missing out on in important aspects of the lease, but maybe not the two most important aspects. So if you're deceived on how and what operations can occur in your property, if you're deceived on how you're going to be paid, think about everything else that's, that are in these documents. And think about if you're going to be deceived on these points. What about when you get the pipeline right away agreement and the person says, oh yeah, we're just going to put a pipeline in. Oh, this is going to be this way, this way, this way. And then all of a sudden it doesn't happen that way because you got deceived. You were deceived and we need to prevent that. We need to prevent that. So I talked in the last example, the last segment about operations where the, a person may think that they have a lease that precludes any operations on the surface of their property. And they think that because literally the term in their lease that they have says no surface use, no surface use, but then you read the language and it allows for surface use. And you think, how can that happen? And I'm telling you, it does, it did, and it will continue. And we need to stop it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So, okay, now we're going to talk about royalty and I'm going to talk specifically about royalty calculation. So very, very common. Everybody certainly listening to this show knows that there is a buzzword that we want royalties without deductions, royalties without deductions. But there's a major problem. There's a major problem. A lot of people do not understand what this no deductions mean. What does no deductions mean? And it may have different meanings. But we have this, and I always get afraid of these buzzwords that take off because companies are smart. 
and they know that they can flash buzzwords to people, people will say, oh, great. It says here, no deductions. It may say no post-production costs to be taken. So they say, aha, I have what I know I need because it says right here, no post-production costs. It says no deductions, things like that. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I have. So therefore, I don't need to consult with an attorney. I don't need to do a review and consultation. I see these buzzwords. I see the words that I know I need to have. But again, the companies are smart. They know that people are looking for buzzwords. So what do they do? Buzz, 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 insert them into the document. Get the buzzwords in there and the people will think they're covered and then they will sign. That, my friends, I believe occurs all the time. And there's no place worse than in the royalties and how royalties are going to be calculated. So again, the theme of this show is deception on two of the most important, if not the most important aspects of a lease. What type of surface operations can occur? And we've already talked about, gave you an example where the lease appears to say none, but then when you read the language, it's clear that they are allowed to work on the surface, that they could put a pad, a road, a pipeline, a pond, and so on and so on. Well, here we're talking about royalty and royalty calculation. So here's an example. Again, I promise you it's black and white. Here's the term that literally the heading, and this one they even do a little bit better than the other one because here, not only do they put these words in bold type, they also put them in all capitals, all capital letters in bold type says the following three words, no post-production costs. It is a heading in the gas lease presented to the landowner, the royalty owner. This says no post-production costs. Landowner believes this means that they are going to have no post-production costs because my gosh, it says it in black and white, all caps, bold letters, no post-production costs, meaning no deductions, meaning, wow, these are the buzzwords I'm looking for. So when I see in all caps, not only are they buzzwords, they're buzzwords that are in bold face, all caps, no post-production costs. Then it goes on to say, and I'm going to read this verbatim. There shall be no deductions from the royalty payments described above for any cost of production. They can't do that anyway. Production, including exploring or surveying the leased premises for oil and gas or installing, drilling, completing, equipping, and producing a well. So let me pause there. Again, this is all bold letters. It says no post-production costs. Post-production. And the first sentence says there will be no deductions, buzzwords, no deductions from the royalty payments, buzz, 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 for production. Doesn't say for post-production, says for production. So a no post-production paragraph says there shall be no deductions from the royalty for any of the cost of production, but this says no post-production costs. So, okay, must be covered in the second sentence here. The second sentence reads, lessee, meaning company, may deduct from royalty payments, lessor landowners, pro rata share of any tax imposed by any governmental authority or government authority that is levied upon the value of production or the severance of oil and gas from the leased premises, period. By the way, end of paragraph. So we have no post-production costs in all bold letters. And beneath it, it says, we will not take deductions for the cost of production. And then it says, we will deduct from your payments your share of any severance tax or taxes that are placed on the extraction of gas. Nowhere, nowhere whatsoever in this paragraph does it even mention post-production costs. 
Can you believe that? Literally, it is a heading of no post-production cost, and there is not a part of this provision that actually even mentions post-production costs, yet alone, yet alone says that you will not, not have these post-production costs deducted from your lease. And shockingly, elsewhere it allows for those deductions. But they gave you the buzzwords, all capitals, bold face, no post-production costs. They then throw in the buzzwords of no deductions from your royalty, but then it says for the cost of production, not post-production, production no cost to produce it yet the paragraph says no post-production cost my book that is unbelievable deception and that is on an unbelievably important aspect of your lease will you or will you not have to pay for post-production costs will you or will you not have deductions from your royalty where will or will your royalty not be calculated at the sell point Will it be calculated at the wellhead? This person looking at this can be very, very easily deceived, but it's your job not to be. And you cannot be deceived by getting advice from somebody working for you and not just looking at these headings, but understanding the loopholes and the games that are played and, in my opinion, the deception that occurs. we got to stop it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can join me each and every week at this time on this station. We're not done. we got another segment left. Reviews, consultations, vertical wells shut in, multi-unit wells, any and all oil and gas related matters. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. Remember, I have not, I do not, and I will never represent gas or pipeline companies. And I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember to join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. Give us a call, learn about representation, reviews, consultations, Cabot multi-unit well request, Chesapeake multi-unit well request, allocation agreements, lease amendments, modifications, and ratifications. Stop signing pipeline agreements. Stop signing. Get a review consultation at minimum and then decide what to do. But we have to turn this around and stop signing bad agreements and stop signing pipeline agreements. In my opinion, $15 a foot. We got to do better than this. We have to do better than this. All right. So let me get back. I got a short segment here. I want to jump back into it again real quick. Royalties. How are they going to be calculated? How can a company operate on the surface of your property? What rights do they have? These are two major parts of the lease. We already explained how a person can be deceived where they think they have a no surface or restrictive lease that doesn't allow surface operations when in fact it's totally opposite. Despite what the heading says, no surface use, the company has the right to use the surface. They just have to get your permission and you can't withhold it unreasonably. They have the right to use the surface. Number two, royalty calculation. How are your royalties going to be paid? Are you going to have deductions taken or not? Just went through a provision in the last segment that says no post-production costs. The inference is, hey, we're not going to deduct post-production costs, no deductions. But in reality, <laughs> the term doesn't even mention no deductions post-production cost never even mentions it yet alone precluding the company from taking deductions here's another example and i'm going to tell you i don't have enough time to get through all of these here's another one the heading heading this one all capitals and underlined not bold though just underlined all capitals royalties colon no deductions clause i'm going to paraphrase it says that the parties agree that royalties shall be paid without deduction, directly or indirectly, for the cost of producing, gathering, storing, separating, treating, dehydrating, compressing, processing, transportation, and marketing of the oil and gas and other products produced. Let me just explain. It says here, sentence, that royalties, heading, no deductions clause, that royalties will be paid without direct or without deduction for the cost of producing, gathering, transportating, so on, so on, so on. No deductions. All right, wonderful. Buzzwords, buzzwords, that's what we want. However, again, next sentence states, however, that should be a red flag. However, 
12.5% pro rate a share of such costs, which result in enhancing the value of marketable gas to get a better price can be deducted so long as they are reasonable and customary. I just threw that page <laughs> out of my mind. I go out of my mind, guys. Royalties, no deduction is the heading. Then it says that if we enhance the value of the gas, you don't get that benefit. What does that mean? It means that the company will use, in my opinion, we'll call it semantics. They will say, we're not taking the deduction. If we sold it at $2 and we're not going to deduct 50 cents in pipeline fees so you get the wellhead price, we're not going to take these post-production cost deductions. What we're going to do, though, is this, is if we sell the gas for $2 when it goes into the interstate pipeline, we are not going to say, well, it cost us 50 cents to get it there. And so we're not going to take the deduction of 50 cents. We're not going to go, hey, your gas was sold at $2 and we had your share of expenses were 50 cents. So when we pay you royalty, we're not going to take $2 minus 50 cents, which gives us now a price of $1.50. That would be the value at the well because the company had to spend 50 cents in fees to get it from the well to the point where they've sold it, what they'll say is, well, we are not going to take that deduction where we sold it for $2, we deduct a 50 cents, and you get royalty at $1.50. We're not going to do that, but we are only going to give you royalty at $1.50 instead of the $2 price. You say, well, how can you do that? If you sold it at $2 and you're now going to only pay me royalty based on a dollar fifty. How can you do that? Are you not taking a fifty cent deduction from the two dollar price, and that's why you're paying me a dollar fifty? And they say, well, no. Here's what we're doing, sir, lady. Here's what we're doing. The gas came out of the ground, and the value of the gas was a dollar fifty at the well site. We then incurred. 50 cents in fees to get it from the well site to the point where we sold it and we sold it at two dollars so you ladies and gentlemen you sir are looking at this the wrong way we're not selling it at two dollars and deducting 50 cents and giving you royalty at a dollar fifty what we're doing is is we're just simply not giving you the benefit of an enhancement of the value of the gas Meaning, the gas was worth $1.50 at the well site when it came out of the ground. We put it into a pipeline, incurred 50 cents of fees, and we're now selling it for $2. Well, your gas was in a marketable form at the well site. It was ready to be sold or used when it came out of the ground, and its value there was $1.50. So we're not giving you the benefit of the 50 cents that we used and we spent to enhance the value of the gas. We call that a deduction. They call it, no, you're just not getting the enhancement. That, to me, is pretty significant deception, which could cost you hundreds of thousands, and depending upon the size of the property, even millions. Deception, deception, deception. we got to stop it. I'm up against it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, Landman works for the company, not you, the landowner. I have not, I do not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. Listen every week at this time on this station. Have a great week, everyone. See you next week.